As the year 2019 comes to a close, AMD are releasing Adrenaline 2020, a driver update which looks to increase the usability and speed of the user interface powering the graphics driver, and rather importantly, it adds new features. The one new feature I'm particularly interested in in this driver is something called Radeon Boost, an AMD developed method of scaling performance and resolution in real time in a select grouping of games. And here AMD makes the promise that the performance uplifts for the feature are significant, and the loss to quality is minimal for most users in most use cases. And I think that is a claim I would love to put to the test. So how does this Radeon Boost feature actually fare in my eyes? Well, I think a good place to start is a description of what it is. The Radeon Boost feature as implemented and enabled in the driver is a form of dynamic resolution scaling. But it is not the same as dynamic resolution scaling which we've mentioned endlessly on this channel over the years. Nor is it dynamic resolution scaling that I made a tech focus video on. This version of dynamic resolution scaling scales the resolution down based upon the metric of screen movement. Other versions of dynamic resolution we have covered primarily at DF in the past are based upon performance metrics. So in a game like Titanfall 2 for example, performance and screen resolution scales based upon a chosen target frame rate, like 60 FPS. If the FPS is not 60 or will not be 60 in the next frame, then the game will drop resolution to help the frame rate stay at 60. The version of DRS in Radeon Boost has no concept of your frame rate really, and instead works on the parameter of whether your screen is in motion due to user input. So if you move your mouse basically. This is actually a version of DRS we saw a long time ago in Killzone Mercenary on the PS Vita if you remember that. But what is the point of dynamic resolution scaling if it's not about targeting a certain level of performance like 60 FPS or 120 FPS. The idea behind Radeon Boost is based on two realities that it wants to exploit. The first principle is that in the heat of game action where the screen is moving often, we as fallible human beings can perhaps not be so cognizant of changes to resolution since our mind is perhaps focused on other facets like shape recognition, colors, or just not losing in the game we're playing. So while controlling the game view and moving it rapidly and concentrating on the game itself, we are perhaps less sensitive to changes in resolution. The other principle Radeon Boost looks to exploit is the fact that most modern gaming is done on flat panel monitors which use the sample and hold technique for displaying pixels. We have talked about this before on the channel, but when an LCD, OLED television screen, or any type of IPS and VA monitor displays content which moves, the relative change in pixel color and luminance from the previous refreshed image is not ideal. So the reproduced image in one frame is always an amalgam of it and previous frames. So you will see blur and ghosting from previous frames in nearly every modern display, whether it is a TV or a high-end gaming monitor. This can be reduced by strobing black in between frames, as is done with low motion blur modes on many displays, so there's kind of a neutral tone that blends in. Or it can be reduced by increasing the refresh rate and frame rate at the same time so that there's a smaller physical gap between frames and therefore less blur. But these methods to fight it only help so much and would require very very high frame rates to prevent this artifact in full. We are still quite a ways off technologically from the amazing motion reproduction that we saw when CRTs were commonplace. So modern monitors show off images that look blurry and ghosty when the screen moves. Radeon Boost exploits this inherent blurriness by changing resolution during movements when the screen is already blurry anyway. And that's how it works on paper. Simple enough. But how does it work in practice? To take a look at Radeon Boost in action, I loaded up Borderlands 3 here, set up to display at 1440p, which is a common monitor resolution these days. I set the game to DirectX 11 as per AMD's guidance for the Radeon Boost feature, which has better support for DX11 versions of the game. I then set Radeon Boost to its default maximum 50% scaling. Then I just tried out the game running at various settings on an RX 580. The first thing I noticed was that any and every mouse movement will start the dynamic resolution scaling. So not just controlling a character view in gameplay. 
Static screens where you use the mouse to control the UI will also see real-time resolution reduction, which did look a little bit jarring at the default 50% Radeon Boost settings. The other most noticeable aspect of Radeon Boost feature right at the start was how it scales itself down in accordance with the velocity of mouse movement. So slower mouse movement, as you can see here on this character, will have the resolution scaling only partially down, not the full 50%. Ultra fast and constant movement of the mouse, on the other hand, will keep that resolution down to 50% almost the entire time. Here you may notice that I'm utilizing a form of anti-aliasing, namely the game's provided TAA. I would say anti-aliasing is necessary when using Radeon Boost to help hide the reductions of resolution. Edges that are more aliased, like the images you see here, allow for the cumulative effects of resolution reduction like flicker and pixel crawl to become more obvious. As I got in game, two other things immediately revealed themselves. The first is a bit obvious. Any keyboard commands controlling your character's view in 3D space did not turn on the resolution scaling, so all movements with WASD or the shift key in Borderlands 3 kept performance here exactly the same. And here I was running at ultra settings at 1440p, so the performance was not too great and hovered around and below 30fps here while moving with WASD. Moving the mouse though produced results as I expected with the resolution decreasing and the frame rate increasing as I move the mouse. But ultra settings and drops below 30 FPS are not great, so I then opted to use our recommended optimized settings for Borderlands 3 and carried on my way playing the game. Then my first disappointment hit. To test as much as I could, I also tried out gameplay on a gamepad. Not my preferred way, but people do it. And moving the screen there with a gamepad did not at all turn on the resolution scaling from Radeon Boost. So at least in this game, at this moment, Radeon Boost will not function well using a gamepad. So it works and is easy to set up I would say, but how useful is it? In this game, at 1440p resolution on this GPU with Radeon Boost set to 50%, I would say the greatest places I noticed the resolution changing in the gameplay itself would be in those scenes where the camera is still and yet you can still move the mouse, like when you navigate the character inventory or on any elements in other gameplay with extremely stark color, so cartoony outlines that the game has, or areas where there's a lot of texture contrast. It is not as if I could see that the edges were lower resolution or something in the heat of action, but rather there was a macro effect on the entire screen, so distinct elements became momentarily elements that were more flickery, brighter, or suddenly had more contrast as a macro of effect as their resolution was reduced. They stood out in my mind's eye when this happened. Even with me focusing on the gameplay, I noticed the reduction of quality at 1440p with these settings, but it was not always wholly distracting. This is interesting because if you objectively look at discrete screen elements like the gun model here, it has a very obvious change in quality when the camera moves, and you can see that classic naively upscaled look to its pixel quality. But in action, I was not noticing it to that level of severity of course, when I was concentrating on enemies and staying alive. What I subjectively felt was less intense than what you can objectively see here. Still, my end takeaway is that 50% resolution scaling in a game with this much camera movement and art style was still rather visible at 1440p, and perhaps too visible, but it did not ruin the experience. For those of you who wish to make it less visible, I would say you should scale down the Radiant Boost percentage to 83.3%, it will give you less of a performance boost overall, but it will be as invisible as the most common sub-native scaling we see in games today, if not more so since it's only happening on mouse movement. But what about the performance benefit? Well here in Borderlands 3 I was targeting 60fps, with VSync engaged at our optimized settings at 1440p. It was not always 60fps at these settings. It would have been a constant 60 if the mouse was moving constantly. But in all those moments when I am, say, backtracking while firing, sitting still while firing, or just traversing without moving the mouse too much, or when a large explosion occurs and my mouse is not zipping about, then the resolution was closer to 1440p and the frame rate was lower. And here, being below 60 FPS meant I was missing VSync refreshes and I was seeing frames persist unevenly between 16.6ms and 33.3ms so judder in animation was obvious. It really didn't feel good or look great when you have the game constantly shifting between fluid frame reproduction at 60 and less fluid frame reproduction in the 50s. 
So this is where my first recommendation comes in. I would recommend using Radeon Boost when your base average frame rate without Radeon Boost being active is visibly and subjectively smooth for you. So for many people this will mean that your frame rate already has to be at 60 FPS in V-Sync to utilize Radeon Boost. When testing the game at 1080p where a base 60 FPS is basically guaranteed, at default Radeon Boost values of 50% res scaling, I saw an average 14% higher frame rate across the entire first mission of the game versus the feature being set to off. But that 50% res scaling was way too obvious for me at 1080p. The less obvious 83% res scaling had an average frame rate that was just 6% higher than Radeon Boost being set to off in the same mission. These are numbers though which are not set in stone, as it is depending very much so upon the relative amount of mouse movement that you end up doing as a player each time you play. But really, the best place of use for Radeon Boost is one where you're not using V-Sync and already in excess of 60. Those who target above 60 FPS essentially and are using FreeSync capable monitors. This is the use case and user I would say that will benefit the most from Radeon Boost's dynamic resolution scaling. Essentially, this feature will look and function best in those games where the GPU is the greatest limiting factor in performance, where the frame rate is as a base, always above 60 more or less, and where their frame rate does not have great deltas based upon what's happening. Many of the most popular multiplayer games fit this profile essentially. In such games, you're often turning the mouse rapidly to target things behind your character, and as so, you will see greater frame rates and response time in your controls in those movements when you need them. Playing Overwatch here with this feature on and off at 1440p on an RX 580 with FreeSync active, I did notice a change in input latency in those moments when I spun rapidly to engage other players. So it could definitely have some usefulness there for players who prioritize input response over visual acuity. But for those of you who play single player games or already have decent frame rates at fixed resolutions, I think you should try out Radeon Boost utilizing an 83% resolution scale just to see how it works and perhaps you can find out that you'll barely notice it and you can enjoy the slight uptick in performance that you may see there. But that is really all that can be said here I think about Radeon Boost. It's neat but it needs wider support in games like CSGO and Fortnite needs gamepad support, and I really think they should perhaps look into it having it scale with performance metrics. The Radeon driver now offers internal performance metrics that are rather accurate as I can see, so why don't they try scaling resolution based upon that as an option? That is assuming though that the feature will work correctly. Borderlands 3 is not the poster child for stability, but one time after the game restarted, the resolution kept changing with mouse movement but it was not upscaling the image, leaving this kind of hilarious bug. Beyond Radeon Boost's quirk, the Adrenaline 2020 date to UI is rather excellent from a usability standpoint. It may offer less fine grain controls than the NVIDIA control panel in certain areas, but it is incredibly fast. The NVIDIA control panel requires quite a long time to open up or apply features, while in the Radeon settings menu, there's no downtime at all basically. The biggest plus here is now you can open up the driver options at any one moment that you wish as an on-screen overlay. I mean, just look at the amount of granularity regarding performance statistics on offer here. GPU utilization, frame time graphs, even in-game overclocking and messing with scaling features. It's really incredible and AMD did an amazing job here. Also, here they added integer scaling for every GPU, and not just the latest ones, so thank you for that AMD. Now only if GPU manufacturers made it so you could apply integer scaling on a per game basis instead of system wide. But until then, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy it, then hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. If you are already a subscriber, then consider hitting that little bell in the corner to be informed as soon as Digital Foundry posts a video. If you want to talk to me about Radeon Boost or Adrenaline 2020, then write a comment below or follow me and Digital Foundry on Twitter. And as always, this is Alex bidding you farewell und auf Wiedersehen.